Now let's move on to the next step and populate these grid tiles with actual topics. So to do that, we need a data set to work with. So let's create that. So first of all, I want to create a model class which is going to represent every single word in this app. So in the lib, I'm going to create a new directory and this will be named models. Then in here, I'll create a new Dart file and this will be named Word. I'll create a class which is named Word. So what we're doing here is we want to have every word in this app represented by a model object. And the reason for that is a word will have multiple properties. We'll have the English, the character for Chinese, the pinyin in Chinese, and also we can categorize every word by a topic. So we'll have all of our words organized by a series of topics. So by using a model class, we can easily encapsulate all of that data. So let's set up those properties. So we'll have four. They'll all be of type string. So they'll all be final too. Final string topic. We'll have a final string English. We will have a final string character. So that'll be the Chinese character. And we'll have a final string pinyin. Now all of these are required. So we'll create our constructor. We'll use the required keyword. So these must be passed in when we create an object. And we'll use the, this keyword just to reference them nice and easily. So we've got topic required this dot English required this dot character and required this dot pinyin. So now let's set up a list of type word, which will be our word bank for the game. So it will be all of our data. So in lib, I'll go new directory and I'll name this data. Then I'll create a new Dart file and I'll name this words. So this is plural. Then this will be a final list. This will be named words. So now we have a list of type word. We can populate this with as many words as we want to create all of our words for the app. So let's create our first entry. And now we have that nicely ready for us to fill in. So let's create our first topic. We'll make this a topic of beach related words. Let's create our first word. We'll make this swimsuit. And now we need a Chinese character and pinyin. So to populate this list, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you're not familiar with Chinese, for example, you could just go to Google Translate, put in the English word and then copy and paste in the character and pinyin here. If you are a little bit familiar with Chinese, then you may want to just type this in directly. So let me show you how to set up so you can type in, in Chinese characters on Windows and also type in pinyin. So under window settings, go to time and language, then down to language here on the left hand side, and then you can add in whatever language that you want by pressing that plus icon here. So you can add in Chinese or heaps of other options too. Once you've installed that language down here on the bottom right, you just need to change to that language before you start typing. And again, this will be a little bit difficult if you're not already familiar with Chinese. So otherwise you could just copy and paste in the word or do another language that you're more familiar with. So in this case, I want to type in swimsuit in Chinese. So to type out the Chinese character, you type in pinyin and then you'll have the character show up. So swimsuit is yo yong yi. So yo yong yi. And that is the first entry here. So number one. So just press one. So we have the character. With the Windows language setting, you can display characters, but you can't display the pinyin. So if you'd like to display pinyin, I'm using a really small app that's really helpful. So you can install this. It will take a few seconds. Come down here and it's named Japanese Pinyin Tones, but it will display the Chinese tone, so that's fine. First one is Tone 2. The second one is Tone 3. So you type in the Pinyin and then you press 1, 2, 3 or 4 after to indicate the tone. And then the last one is the first tone. So now we have our first entry. Let's 
create a few more entries. So in total, let's create say 20 to 25 entries. That's a good initial dummy data set to get working with. So I'll copy this, paste this a few times. So we have swimsuit, next one put in seashell. And in this case, I've got a bunch of beach words. I've got some bird words. And then for these other topics, I've just got one word for each topic, but obviously you'd want to fill out multiple words for every different topic. But this just gives us an idea of the data set, and then we can build on this later. So now that we have our data, our word bank, let's go back to our homepage. So now in the homepage, we want to populate these grid tiles with all of the different topics. So let's get that done. I'm going to create a list and I'll just press control spacebar so we're typing in English again. I'll create a list of type string and I'll write topics. So this list will just hold the actual topics. And I've used an underscore here, so this is just private to this class. In this init state, what I want to do is populate this list of string with all the topics. So to do that, I can just use a for in loop. So this will cycle through all of the entries in our words list that we just created. And then I can write topics.add the topic. And we'll have one small issue with this current code, and that is the same topic will be repeated. And here I've written, if it does not already contain this topic, then add it. So that way we'll avoid the same topic being added to the list more than once. Okay, so now we have this list populated with all the different topics when the init state runs, when this home page first runs. So now let's populate those in our containers. So we'll come down here to our builder. And at the moment, we're just returning a container. Let's create a child, text, and in here, I'll write topics, and then I can select this at the index. Okay, hot restart. And we have a range error, and that is because we only have a limited amount of topics. So what we need to do is in here, we have a child count property and we need to set that to topics.length. Okay, hot restart. Okay, cool. So now we have all of our topics laid out. Let's also sort these so the alphabetical looks a little bit better if we've done it that way. So down here, we can just go to our topics list and select the sort method. And then that should do all the work for us. Hot restart. Perfect. So now we have all of our topics laid out alphabetically. Now let's make our topic box look a little bit nicer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refactor this out into its own Flutter widget. So I'll call this topic tile. And I'll put this in its own file. I'll create a new directory and I'll name this components. So this will be basically all the different widgets, particularly the widgets that we use multiple times in the app. I'll create a directory and another directory that I'll name homepage. And in here, I'll create a Dart file and this will be our topic tile. And because we'll have components for different pages, I'm going to put this in a subdirectory here just to keep it nice and organized. So in this new file, I'll paste in topic tile and then just import the material. And here we need to pass in the actual topic. So let's create a string. We'll name this topic. We can remove this here. We can then just put required this dot topic. 
and then we can just write in the topic directly here. Back in the home page, topic, we will just write topics at the index and then import the file that we just created. So here we're passing in each topic based on the index of when our child is laid out in our grid. Cool, so now we can just focus on this topic tile here. So the first thing is, is I want to give the corners some rounding. So decoration, and I'll use a box decoration, and then border radius, border radius dot circular, and then we'll pass in, say, 30. Let's see how that looks. Oh, we need to add some color as well. So color. Okay, and now for each of our tiles, I want us to have an image and also the text under that image. So to do that, let's use a column. So this container I'll wrap in a column and each of these children I'll wrap in an expanded. Copy this and paste this here. Okay, and I'll just write image here. So we'll import our images very shortly. So here we have the image and then the topic under it. I want the image to be a little bit bigger, so we'll put a flex of two and the default flex is one here. So the expanded is forcing its children to fill up all of the available space and then that flex property is proportionally dividing that space. Yeah.